Welcome to another episode of Let's Chat. Joining me is South African bred, Vancouver based 18 year old magician Gabrielle Lester, also known as the Diva of Deception. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? I'm good. You're a magician. How old were you when you started? Uh, I was 10 when I started performing. Young kids think about becoming doctors, lawyers, CEOs, and many other things. For you, why did you become a magician? Uh, I fell in love with it at an early age and was lucky enough to be surrounded by a lot of mentors that kind of got me hooked. What was the first trick or illusion that you ever learned? Oh, uh, when I was 10, I saw Sean Farquhar put a Sharpie up his, up his nose, and that was kind of what hooked me. Uh, I don't think I ever learned it. I just kind of assumed he put a Sharpie in his brain for a long time. What did your parents say when you told them you wanted to be a magician? Um, they were probably hesitant at first, but now they're like extremely supportive. I'm, I'm really, really lucky. You're known as the Diva of Deception. How did you get the name? I was designing a poster for a show I was working on and woke up one night at like 2 a.m. And I'm like, I should add this and then kind of went with it. Nothing intelligent behind it. It just happened. <laughs> Who do you look up to as an inspiration or mentors in magic? Oh, uh, in the magic world, I've got quite a few. Um, I'd say Jeff McBride's certainly been extremely helpful. And then Sean Farquhar as well, who's my closest mentor now, who I, I think I'll always look up to. Earlier this year, you were accepted as a member of the Academy of Magical Arts Junior Program at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. Can you tell me about that program? What does it mean to you to be accepted? Yeah, uh, I mean, the junior program at the castle was such an honor to get accepted to, and it was something I dreamed of for a long time. Um, and I'm still Vancouver based, so I'm commuting down there once a month to go to the meetings, and I, I couldn't be happier. It's such a wonderful program, and the people running it are really, really amazing. Your former, your former magic teacher, Jeff McBride, once said, Gabrielle has a bright future in magic. What does that mean to, to you when you hear that? Oh, it still touches my heart. Jeff is really, really a wonderful guy, and he's known me since I was a little kid, and uh, I probably wouldn't be doing anything to the scale of what I'm doing today without his encouragement. Also, Lance Burton said, I predict she will, will be a major force in magic for many years to come. What does that mean to you? <laughs> oh, Lance is also really wonderful. Uh, Lance and Jeff run the team seminar at the International Brotherhood of Magicians Convention, and both of them have just had such a huge impact on making young performers get to where they are today. In 2019, you were the youngest magician to receive the coveted Eugene Berger Leg uh, Legacy Award. What is the award? Oh, yeah, that is this one there, which is still one of the favorite things I have. Um, for people that aren't familiar with Eugene, he worked with Jeff at the mystery school, and he was just such a wonderful, wonderful guy. And uh, when they created the Legacy Award, it was kind of after he passed for people to kind of continue his legacy and performers they thought, you know, uh, would be the future of magic or to continue that kind of line of things. And uh yeah, it was really, really, really such an honor. I've really looked up to Eugene for a long time. So having my name on that meant the world. With your life stressed out before you, do you think magic will be something you want to keep doing when you're in your 70s or 80s? Or do you think you'll ever move on to something else? I think I will be doing it till the day I die. Have you ever seen the, movie, the 2018 movie called The School of Magic? It's about three aspiring magicians from the College of Magic in Cape Town, South Africa, who traveled to Las Vegas where they compete in the World Teen Magic Competitions. I haven't seen it, no. Speaking of championships, will you be going to Quebec this year for the Federation of International Society of Magicians World Championships at the end of July? If so, I... will you be going as a spectator or a performer? I was planning on going, um, but I will actually be working the castle that week as a part of the junior program, so I won't be able to attend. During your spare time, you like riding and racing motorcycles, also working on engines. How did you get into motorcycles? Uh, I think that passion mostly came from my dad. Uh, he used to be a race car driver when he was in South Africa. And I think both him and I are really major adrenaline junkies. And that was just kind of my ode to following in his footsteps. Do you have your own bike? I've got a few, yeah. What kind of motorcycles do you have? Uh, mostly Yamahas. I've got two R3s, one street, one track, and then some dirt as well. You do a stage show. With your love of motorcycles, would you ever make one disappear? And have you already done one? I've been working on something, a um, couple ideas of putting the bike in the show. So something's in the works currently. So what was it like for you to go from South Africa to Vancouver? You know, I was too young to really notice a huge change in it. Um, but being where I am now and having the opportunity to have traveled back, I think that I'm really, really lucky that my parents, you know, 
put their lives on the line to come over here and start a new life because it really was a dangerous environment where we were living. And uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm really lucky to be here. So you said you started magic when you were 10 years old. Was that back in South Africa or was that when you came here? That was here. So what was, uh, did you have any inkling of magic when you were back in South Africa or did you decide it when you came here? Yeah, I mean, I, I always loved it as a kid and I feel like a lot of people have a little bit of a passion for it growing up, but I think it was probably around like nine or 10 when I got really hooked. Is there any one thing you would like to do in your show that you haven't done yet? I don't know. I feel like the most important thing for me is connecting with people. And I feel like I, you know, performers do that all the time, but I feel like every show is just another person or another audience. And if I can just keep doing that, I love that. Has your age played a factor in anything that you have done with magic wise because of anybody taking you like to say, Oh, she's 18. She doesn't know much, but you've done a lot. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I really don't feel like I'm 18 and I feel like I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, And I mean, I really, really love it. I think the only, you know, borders I run into would be traveling, I think has been a difficult thing doing on your own, which hasn't been too much of a border, but it's, it's still difficult. But uh, no, I can't, I can't say it stopped me in any way. If anything, it's given me a leg up and helping because a lot of people want to support young performers and that's really, really helped me out in the long run. You performed 27 uh, shows at the Magic Castle. What was that like? Yeah, so I was working with Elliot Hunter, who is also a great performer. He'll be at performing, competing at FISM this year. Um, it was a crazy, crazy experience. Um, we've done it twice now of two runs at the castle. And I mean, I, I was a little kid dreaming of one day being able to even look at the Magic Castle and, and just the idea of performing there was insane. And uh, I mean, it, it was my first time there. So it was <laughs> crazy. How does one person get into the Magic Castle? Because I know that you have to have to know somebody to know somebody to know somebody. Yeah, so the castle is invite-based, so you can either know someone that goes there, or if you're a magician, you can audition to get into the, the club as well. What was the audition process for, for you? Yeah, I mean, I became a member recently, um, a few months following the performances there. So that was really just kind of getting in contact with the program. I had the honor, like I was lucky enough to kind of meet everyone in the program while I was there working those weeks at the castle. So I became more familiar with the people running the program and kind of the whole idea of it. Um, so when the audition day kind of rolled around, it felt a little bit more comfortable. I wasn't walking into some strange environment with a bunch of strangers. Everyone was really, really wonderful. I mean, I was, shame, I shouldn't say that. I was nervous. I was, I was, I'm always nervous before shows, like even if I do a million. So I was definitely stressed out before it, but you know, you get up there and you do it and I loved it. Would you ever go on shows like Fool Us or Masters of Illusion if they asked you? I would. And what, uh, what would you do for Penn and Teller? Would you do anything special or just something that you've already done? I, I, I would definitely do something special for them. Okay, so finally, where can people find you online? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, website? Uh, yeah, I believe all my handles are at Magic Gabriella on everything like Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, um, and YouTube, or just first and last name, Gabriella Lester. That's my website. And so I love talking to people. I love, I get some really, really amazing messages. And um, I've been able to mentor some really young performers now from schools that I used to go to of teachers reaching out saying, hey, this kid's really interested. So I love, I love, I love being able to help out and talk to magicians. So. Well, thank you, Gabriella, for joining me on this episode of Let's Chat With. Of course. Thanks for the invite.